So what is our first order differential equation? So let's go and look at words that we know about. So we know equation. So that's two expressions with an equal sign in between. Differential, that means derivative. So it's an equation, it's got derivative. That takes care of that word. All right, first order. What that means is there's only a first derivative. There's not a second or third or fourth, et cetera, derivative. So it's just an equation with one derivative in, in it. So first order differential equation is of the form, if we use y's and x's, the usual variables dy dx equals some function of xy. And the solution is a function function of x such that such that the derivative equals f of x comma that y of x function. So you're basically going to substitute in y. On the left side you're taking a derivative and on the right side you're just plugging in whatever you said was y. And the differential equation is separable if this f of x, y equals some function of x times some function of y. If you can separate it out So i.e. the x's and y's factor out separately. So we had that dy dx equals f of x y. And if you can separate the x's and y's, if you can turn f into a function of x times a function of y. Now we just separate. We're going to treat dy dx like a fraction, and we're going to multiply by dx. And then get the y, h of y term, out of there. So we'll divide by h of y. And once we're down here, all we're going to do is, uh, how do we solve for y? It's a little bit strange. But how do we get rid of dy? We take an antiderivative. That will basically consume the dy and the dx. So the operation we do is an antiderivative on both sides. Now depending on what the functions are, you get something different on either side. So let's go about solving an example. So is this separable? Is this a function of x times a function of y? This one's pretty obvious. X's and y's are separated nicely. All right, we're going to get all x's on one side, y's on the other. First step, multiply by dx. So get the dx over to the right side. And second step, get the y's off the right side. So we'll divide by 1 plus y. So how do I solve for y in this form? What's my next step? Yep, antiderivative or integrate. So put some integral signs in. I'm just drawing them in blue because I want you to just be aware that those that's an operation we're applying. 
So we're saying integrate both sides. So now integrate both sides. I'll do the right side. Antiderivative e to the x is e to the x. So you can do the other side. What is a good u substitution on the right side? One plus y. Yep, try that. One plus y. Start with simple and then go try more difficult things. But start easy first. And du is just not dx, but it's just one dy. Because your variable is y now. So it's a little bit different. So go ahead and make that substitution and tell me what the antiderivative is. And then unsubstitute. Antiderivative calculus questions. What did I leave out? What did I forget? Plus C. So I think we did this. Did we deal with the plus C before? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we saw there's a C, different constant on each side. So I'm going to just write a constant on one side. And I'm going to be solving for Y. So I'll write the constant on the right side, on the X side. I'll go with the plus c, plus c, plus c. So we should always write the c so that it's always positive in this case. I have no idea what c is. c might be negative, um, in which case it'll be e to the x minus. I'm saying we wrote on the other side, would we have to move it over and basically make it minus c? Yes, but so if, if I did, so if I did that and this was minus c, it's going to turn out to be whatever number it's going to be. If I write it as minus c, maybe I'll get 3. And if you're doing plus c, you'll get negative 3. So it'll turn out to be the same value, or the same equation, if it you. Which it doesn't matter what side. Although if you put your constant on the other side, you'll get negative what I get for my constant. Okay. But in the end, the equation you get at the very end, once you figure out c, will be the same thing. Okay. So we'll finish this by solving for y. It's not too hard to solve for y here, so we're going to take, let's see, ln inverse of both sides, or raise <coughs> both sides. Another way to write it, I'm going to, I don't know how to say it other than take the natural log inverse of both sides. That's another way to write natural log inverse, right there, e to that stuff. However, I like to write and say natural log inverse. That works much better for me. And again, we have a constant power. Base e to a constant power is some new constant. So we'll write that as capital A. So it's a little weird, e to the e to the x. That seems kind of strange. Let's try to check this by plugging it back in. So how do we check this? We basically take a derivative and then plug it back in. So I need to find, so check, this is our, well, we think this is our answer. Check by finding dy over dx and plugging back in.
back into the original. So this rule is going to be a little tricky. Easy part, there's constant multiple rule and there's subtraction. I can deal with that, no problem. So this is a times derivative e to the e to the x. What's the derivative of negative 1? Zero. Zero. All right, so constant multiple rule. I still haven't dealt with the hard derivative. This is actually not that bad, it's just a chain rule. So we'll carefully find this derivative. So derivative e to anything is e to the thing. And let's write out the chain rule real quick for a little bit of practice. So if I just had e to the f of x power, the derivative of that would be the same thing e to the f of x times what? f prime x. Yep, f prime x. So there's chain rule right there. So in this case, it'd be e to the x, no, e to the e to the x times e to the x. Yep. There we go. e to the e to the x times the derivative of e to the x, which is e to the x. And the way I like to think about chain rule derivatives is Think about making a sculpture out of marble or wood or whatever you have. You sort of pick out the outermost part first. So I'm taking the derivative of e to f of x, so that's e to f of x times the derivative of, you basically go inside. And it seems a little weird, why in the world do we go into the power, not into the base? What we're really looking at this is really what we're looking at natural log inverse of f of x. So of course that is the derivative ln inverse of f of x times f prime of x. So that's what's really happening. The derivative ln inverse is uh, 1 over f of x. So all we did was find y prime or dy dx. That's half the uh, checking process. The other half is go to the original way up here. I'll just copy this original down below. That'll be probably faster. dy dx equals 1 plus y e to the x. So if I just replace dy dx by that quantity we just computed, that doesn't look equal. Well, the other thing I need to do is on the right side where I see y, I need to take out that y and replace it by somewhere that y at the top of the screen. So I'm going to replace the y prime. I better replace the y also. So I'm going to substitute in that 1 plus a e to the e to the x. Oop, I need to squeeze a minus 1 in there. Minus 1 e to the x. So I just took out not just dy dx, but also y and replaced that. Plus 1 minus 1 cancels, no problem. a e to the e to the x times e to the x equals a e to the e to the x e to the x. Looks good. They're both the same. So checking is not just finding the derivative, but finding it and then carefully plugging it back in. So we're going to solve and check the next problem.
All right, step one, separate. X is on one side, Y is on the other. So I'm going to do the same first step, multiply by DX, get it on the other side. So what I'm going to highlight, we need to move out of the way. So we got X is next to the DY and Y is next to the DX. So what I highlight needs to get out of there. Is that legible? From the back? All right, so basically you just divide by those two things. And then do your best to find the antiderivative. Just looking from a distance, it looks like a U sub will probably work for at least one of them, if not both of them. So once you get in the right form, you do those divisions, a U sub will probably uh, get these integrals. So I'll give you two minutes to see what you can do, some algebra, some calculus, and then do your best to start plugging it back in. And I'll come around to give you help if you're stuck. Talk to your neighbor. This is not an easy question.
So I did a U sub on the Y's. And I, I did a U sub on the X's, but I used the letter W, so I didn't have two U's hanging around that meant different things. So if you want to really use the letter U, you probably should call it U1, and then down here you can call it U2 if you really want to use the letter U. <coughs> Any questions on the U-subs? One of the tricky parts that you maybe didn't see at first was how to go from X to W's or U's. So you just solve for X and then make that substitution. And then you do the algebra, split that to W over W minus 1 over W. And then you can integrate both of those two. So any calc questions or algebra questions on here. We can solve for y without too much work. We'll just multiply by 2, natural log inverse, subtract 1, take a square root in that order. Actually, let's not check this. I don't think it'll take too much time, and it's worth doing, but it will take too much of the of class time up. So I'm going to skip the check. So check by solving for y, then finding dy dx, then plugging in. Next problem, we will do, we'll do one more problem and we'll have initial conditions on this problem. So this, this will be our last differential equation. So this is for the spread of disease. When a disease is properly treated, YDT is proportional to the number of infected people. So this tells you the rate of change of the number of people affected or the rate of spread is proportional to the number of infected people. So we can write dy over dt is proportional to y. Oh, I should write what y is. So y equals the number of infected people dy dt is the change in y, also known as the, uh, the rate of spread. Any given year, the cases are reduced by 20%. If there are 10,000 cases today, how long until 1,000 cases? And today we're going to assume that that is t equals 0. So we'll start the clock today. There are 10,000 cases today. How long until 
until there are 1,000 cases. So we want a... So certainly you can see way more than one year. You're only going to lose 20% of your cases your first year. So we definitely need to go more than one year. So we see our dy over dt equals ky. We already solved that differential equation earlier. Uh, that was the first one we solved. So let's scroll up and see. And we checked it as well. Somewhere up here. So we're going to use that y equals a e to the kt. So in this problem, what we're really looking at are the initial conditions. We want to find what's A and what is K. A is the initial amount, and we can see that. So let's turn our, here's our initial conditions. So let's turn them from English into math notation. So I think the second one is easier to look at, so we'll do that one first. So 1,000 cases today, t equals 0. So what that means is y of 0 equals 10,000. Or if you think about it as t comma y of t will be 0 comma 10,000. So we're going to plug this in. So where I see y, I'm putting 10,000. And t, I'm going to plug in 0. So what is e to the 0 power? E to the 0 power is 1. So this is just a times 1 equals 10,000. And we see that 10,000 is a. So we'll plug that in to our solution. So in a given year, the cases are reduced by 20%. So there's a few ways to apply this. One way is think year zero, we had 10,000. So how many cases are we going to have in year one? 20% less, so it's 20% less of 10,000? 8,000. 8,000. So we got 10,000 first year, we'll get 8,000 the next year. Another way you could do it, if you know, you can just say there's some C cases one year, the next year there'll be 0.8 C times C cases. So 80% of what was there the year before. But we already know there was 10,000 the first, the zero year, so there's going to be 8,000 on year one. So we're going to use that 20% yearly reduction, which means y of 1 is 80% times 10,000, which is 8,000. So we're going to plug that <coughs> into, our, uh, into our equation, our s solution. So y of 1 is 8,000, which equals 10,000 e to the k times 1. So we want to find out what is k. So we're solving for k here. So divide by 10,000 equals e to the k. So that's 8 over 10, which is 4 fifths. And now just take natural log of both sides.
So I just replace k by ln of 4 fifths in the exponent. Now we can use some exponential properties to make, simplify this a little bit. So I'm going to do something bad, some bad math, and then we'll do this properly. So I do get to reduce this right here, except I have to be very careful when I do so. So I can't just write this as uh, 4 fifths times t. That's not the way it works. So I have to be a little bit more careful than that. So let's write down the actual identity that we have. And I think we're not using the letter x, so that'll work here. The problem is, we don't just have e to the ln of 4 fifths, we have e to the ln of 4 fifths times t. So we have to deal with that times t. There's a few ways to deal with it. One way is products of powers are powers of powers. So I can write it as e to the ln 4 fifths raised to the t power. That's how products work. And this now I can reduce this to 4 fifths raised to the t power. So that inside the parentheses is just 4 fifths. There's another way to deal with it, and so if I look just inside the parentheses, what do coefficients, so this is natural log of 4 fifths times t. How does that coefficient of t uh, operate if I push it inside the log? So I could, I could change the order. Maybe this will make it look more familiar. What can I do with that coefficient t in front of the natural log? So I could write it as a power of power instead of product. But what can I do inside the parentheses? What does that coefficient t act like if I push it inside the natural log. Exponent. So coefficient <laughs> outside multiplication of a constant turns into an exponent inside. Now we're going to need a second parenthesis so we're sure that we take it to the t power before we apply the natural log to it. And of course, now I can cancel e to the ln of this stuff is just the stuff. That's just 4 fifths to the t power. So either way, we're going to simplify down to 4 fifths to the t power, no matter which way we go. Did we answer the actual question that was asked? Nope. It said how long until there was 1,000 cases? So yeah, we're going to see what t value gets y to be 1,000. So let's, I'm going to rewrite the question, how long until 1,000 cases. So we're trying to solve y of t equals 1,000 and solve for t. So we can take the actual y of t that we have now. It's got no more undetermined constants. All right, test your algebra skills and see if you can solve for t.
And if you have a calculator, you, you can approximate this. It would be 10.32 years. If you really want to be a maniac, you could write it as 4 fifths log base with 10 like that. But if we're going for a web work answer, I'd go with the one above. You don't need to go that far. So we'll do L'Hopital's rule. We'll start that, that tomorrow. And what else happens tomorrow? So your quiz is going to cover up through 7, 3. Yeah, your quiz covers through 7, 3. So be ready for your quiz tomorrow. And I'll give your quiz at the, I'll give it at the uh, end of class.